Hello and welcome to Rimal's Academy. In today's session, we'll discuss some important newspaper articles from 28th October 2022. For more study materials and updates, you may also join our WhatsApp group. We'll provide the link of the group in the description below. So this is the list of topics that we'll cover in today's session. Let's start. The first article for the day is about a genetically modified hybrid variety of mustard, which is also known as GM mustard. So this basically is in the news because it has received recommendation for commercial cultivation. Okay, so the news says that the GEAC, that is the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, has recommended environmental release of the transgenic hybrid mustard, that is the MH11. Okay, ये जो GM mustard है, इसी का आप कह सकते हो कि commercial नाम है DMH11 for seed production and conduct of field demonstration studies with respect to its efforts, if any, on honeybees and other pollinating insects. तो इसी news के बारे में हम बात करेंगे. We'll try to learn about this GM mustard. We'll try to learn about this appraisal committee, that is the GEAC के बारे में भी हम जानेंगे सो दिस कैन बी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आवर प्रिलिम्स एंड आल्सो फ्रॉम मेंस जीएसपी रिपोर्ट एग्रीकल्चर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट हैज बीन टेकन फ्रॉम द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस सो जीईएसी जो है यू शुड नो दैट इट स्टैंड्स फॉर द जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग अप्रेजल कमेटी व्हिच हैज रिकमेंडेड द एनवायरमेंटल रिलीज ऑफ डीएमएच11 सो डीएमएच11 इज द जीएम मस्टर्ड ओनली दैट इज द जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड मस्टर्ड फॉर इट्स सीड प्रोडक्शन ठीक है एंड टेस्टिंग प्रायर टू कमर्शियल रिलीज अब देखिए इट हैज नॉट रिकमेंडेड द कमर्शियल रिलीज ठीक है इट इज ओनली रिकमेंडेड फॉर इट्स सीड प्रोडक्शन सो इन अदर वर्ड्स वी कैन से कि इट हैज गिवन द ग्रीन सिग्नल फॉर कमर्शियल कल्टीवेशन बाय फार्मर्स विद प्रोडक्शन ऑफ सीड मटेरियल बीइंग द फर्स्ट स्टेप so about the current context you should know one thing that this is not for the first time when geac has approved the commercial cultivation of gm mustard theek hai pehle bhi ise kya gaya tha approve back in the 2017 but then the environment ministry jo hai it vetoed it and suggested that the panel hold more studies on the gm crop so this is the reason ye jo recent jo yahan pe context hai you can say this is the second time or you can say this is the reapproval of the uh, gm mustard to be commercially cultivated ठीक है तो ये जो कमर्शियल कल्टीवेशन है ऑफ द जीएम दैट इज द जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड दिस इज बेसिकली अ हाइब्रिड क्रॉप ठीक है जहां पे जीन को मॉडिफाई किया जाता है सो इट इज प्रोड्यूस बाय द क्रॉस ब्रीडिंग ऑफ टू जेनेटिकली डिफरेंट वैरायटीज दैट कैन बी इवन फ्रॉम द सेम स्पीशीज ठीक है अब जो ऑफ यहां पे जो ऑफस्प्रिंग प्रोड्यूस होता है द ऑफस्प्रिंग व्हिच इज प्रोड्यूस्ड विद दिस टेक्निक यूजुअली हैव हायर यील्ड देन द एग्जिस्टिंग वैरायटीज getting my point so this will be the second gm crop after gm cotton theek hai to ye pehla crop nahi hai the gm mustard is not the first one which is going to be cul uh, commercially cultivated this is the second after cotton the cotton is already ise ab keh sakte ho ki the, the genetically modified cotton is already uh, commercially cultivated in india so gm mustard jo hai it would become the second one after gm cotton theek hai the environmental release of mustard hybrid that is dmh11 so dmh jo yahan pe gm mustard hai which is the uh, genetically uh, modified mustard this is basically dhara mustard hybrid theek okay? hai it stands for dhara mustard hybrid for its seed production and testing as per the existing icar guidelines and other extent rules regulations prior to commercial release to so, commercial release abhi tak allow nahi kiya gaya hai theek okay? hai the approval has been done only for the cultivation we can say so approval is for a limited period of 4 years only to okay to yahan pe जो अप्रूवल दिया गया है द अप्रूवल फॉर द कमर्शियल कल्टीवेशन इट इज ओनली लिमिटेड पीरियड फॉर फोर इयर्स ओनली तो ये जो चार साल है इसमें बेसिकली आप कह सकते हो कि बहुत अलग अलग तरीके से यहां पे द द अथॉरिटीज दे विल ट्राई टू इवैल्यूएट कि इफ इट इज हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ नेगेटिव इफेक्ट ठीक है ये जो जीएम मास्टर व्हिच विल बी प्रोड्यूस इफ इट इज हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ नेगेटिव इंपैक्ट और साइड इफेक्ट तो आप कह सकते हो कि ये जो अप्रूवल है इसे रिवोक करके इसे डिसअप्रूव किया जाएगा ठीक है और इस ये जो चार साल है इसके दौरान भी यहां पे एक्सटर्नल एक्सपर्ट जो है they will also keep visiting the growing sites theek hai jo bhi farms hoga jahan pe ye grow kiya jayega to har saal yahan pe visit kiye jayenge during this 4 years aur yahan pe ye pata kiya jayega ki yahan pe aap keh sakte ho ki the experts will try to evaluate and analyze whether this gm uh, master jo hai whether it can be consumed or not theek hai and at this point of time you should also understand that gm master jo hai na it is an indigenous initiative ठीक है वी आर नॉट डिपेंडिंग ऑन एनी फॉरेन टेक्नोलॉजी और एनी फॉरेन कंट्री फॉर इस डेवलपमेंट ठीक है यहाँ इसे जो ये जीएम मस्टर्ड है जीएम मस्टर्ड दिस वेरिएंट ऑफ द जीएम मस्टर्ड दिस हाइब्रिड वेरिएंट जो है इसे इंडिया में ही इसे आप कह सकते हो कि डेवलप किया गया है ठीक है एंड आप देख सकते हो कि बहुत पहले ही यहाँ पे जो कॉटन है कॉटन को हम ऑलरेडी हम कल्टिवेट करते हैं देन वाई डू यू थिंक सो मच टाइम इज बीन टेकन टू कल्टिवेट द जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड मस्टर्ड बिकॉज कॉटन जो है ना ये हम यूज करते हैं फॉर टेक्सटाइल हम इसे कंज्यूम नहीं करते बट दिस जीएम मस्टर्ड जो है वी आर कंज्यूम इट 
है कि नहीं मास्टर जो है वी कंज्यूम इट आप कह सकते हो इन अर फूड एज वेल सो दिस इज द रीजन वाई इफ इट बिकम्स हार्मफुल इफ इट बिकम्स इफ इट हैज एनी एडवर्स इफेक्ट दैन डेफिनेटली इट इज गोइंग टू बी डेटमेंटल फॉर द हेल्थ ऑफ द पीपल दिस इज द रीजन वाई द अथॉरिटीज आर टेकिंग टाइम इन अप्रूविंग और गिविंग इट अ ग्रीन सिग्नल टू कमर्शियली कल्टिवेट और टू कमर्शियली प्रोड्यूस द जी एम मास्टर आई होप यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट सो बेसिकली यहाँ पे जो रिस्क एसोसिएटेड है इन द जी एम मास्टर इज क्वाइट हाई ठीक है बिकॉज पीपल आर गोइंग टू कंज्यूम दिस प्रोडक्ट so let's look at the scenario of genetically modified crops in india first we can speak about the bt cotton so bt cotton that is the genetically modified cotton jo hai it is the only genetically modified crop that is allowed in india theek hai so अब यहाँ पे मैं जैसे मैंने आपको कहा था बड़े सिंपल टर्म्स में इसीलिए इसे अलाउ किया जाता है बिकॉज नो वन इज गोइंग कंज्यूम इट ठीक है और अगर मान लीजिए कि इफ यू आर गोइंग टू रीप मोर कॉटन फ्रॉम आवर फार्म डेफिनेटली इट विल हेल्प टू बूम आर टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री विच विल ऑल्सो बी बेनिफिशियल फॉर आर इंडियन इकोनॉमी है कि नहीं उसके बाद यहाँ पे बात किया गया है अबाउट दी बीटी ब्रिंजल सो इन बीटी ब्रिंजल जो है जिम परमिट्स द प्लान टू रजिस्ट अटैक्स ऑफ फ्रूट्स एंड शुड बोर्डर्स प्रीवियसली जो है द गवर्नमेंट हैज पुट अ होल्ड ऑन द कमर्शियल रिलीज ऑफ जेनेटिकली मॉडिफाइड मस्टर्ड यू द स्टिफ अपोजिशन From the anti-GMO activists and NGOs. So basically, yeah, but which are activists? They they actually do not want uh, the people or, ah, can I say, the the population to suffer from the ill effects of such uh, genetically modified crops. And then finally, about the current context, के बारे में the DMH 11 mustard. So it is developed by Deepak Pentel, okay, and colleagues in the South Campus of the University of Delhi. And the genetic modification allows cross pollination in a crop that self pollinates in nature. So global variants का हम बात करेंगे across the world. The GM variants of maize, canola, soybean too are available. So globally across the world, आप देखोगे बहुत सारे countries में already there are prevalent. You can say the the various countries are already cultivating or commercially cultivating the genetically modified. Cross, but in case of India, we are going a little slow because we want to play it safe. Take care, because the lives of the people, the health of the people are concerned regarding the experiment or the genetically modification of the crops. So let's learn about this GEAC. That is the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee, which is responsible for allowing or disallowing the cultivation of the genetic of uh, the genetically modified crops. So this, this committee has functions under the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change of the Indian government. The composition, if we talk about it, it is chaired by the chairman. Who is the chairman? It is the special secretary or the additional secretary of the Ministry of Environment only, and it is co-chaired by representative from the Department of the Biotechnology. Presently, it has 24 members and meets every month. We get milte hai to review the applications in the areas indicated above. There is, yah be jitna bhi sara applications aata hai in terms of the genetically modified crops. So as per this uh, request only, the meetings take place from uh, out of these 24 members. The functions ka agar baat karenge, to ye 1989 ka jo rules hai, it is responsible for appraisal of activities involving large scale use of hazardous microorganisms and. And recombinance in research and industrial production from the environmental uh, angle. It is also responsible for appraisal of proposals leading to release of genetically engineered organisms, as I told you already, and products into the environment, including experimental field trials. It also evaluates research into GM plants and recommends or disapproves their release into farmer fields. So normally, if you talk in short, if you talk in simple language, then you can only notice one thing that this particular appraisal committee is related to the, you can say, to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to the scenario of the genetically modified crops in terms of India. So basically, this appraisal committee is related to
वुड ब्रिंग चेंजेस टू अराउंड ट्वेंटी थ्री डिफरेंट एग्जिस्टिंग लॉ तो ऑलरेडी टर्की में जितने ट्वेंटी थ्री लॉज है तो उनको एमेंड करेगा पहला बात एंड ऑल्सो इट विल ब्रिंग अबाउट फोर्टी आर्टिकल्स ठीक है लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा जो यहाँ पे क्रिटिकल पॉइंट है इट इज आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी नाइन ऑफ दिस लॉ सो आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी नाइन ऑफ दी लॉ हैज बिन द मोस्ट कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल आर्टिकल अमंग ऑल द आर्टिकल्स सो दिस पर्टिकुलर आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी नाइन ऑफ द लॉ मैंडेज अप टू थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ इंप्रेजनमेंट फॉर डिसमिनेटिंग दर इज स्प्रेडिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन और मिस इन्फॉर्मेशन वी कैन से दर इज कॉन्ट्रेरी टू रेड टूर्थ and which is related to country's domestic and international security public order and health which allegedly creates public worry fear and panic so if any such information has been uh, used or spread by the social media users okay which is basically false in news uh, false in nature or you can say which is basically for a fake news to is tarike ka ek ke liye journalists ya social media users ko up to 3 years ka ek jail term yahan pe unko diya ja sakta hai according to this law in order to implement this new law social media platforms can be sold to trans- for user data to the courts of the country so this basically jo law hai na it is also against or violative of the aap keh sakte ho of the right to privacy why because agar dekhiye koi bhi case ho gaya regarding the social media users ke bare mein then definitely in order to analyze the case or to learn about the details of this case then definitely we have to uh, have the cooperation from the social media platforms as well for example uh, for example aap keh sakte hai about the twitter for example facebook instagram to ye sara jo account hold ya jo jo platform Now they they have also uh, they basically would also would come under this law because in case of any such uh, news of or event of violation of the uh, particular law the the media platforms they have also got to share the information or share their uh, details uh, with the uh, country का जो यहाँ पे government है उनके साथ share करना होगा तो ये जो particular law है as I have told you it has attracted number of criticism for this particular term disinformation ठीक है and you can see यहाँ पे जो opposition है opposition ने भी काफी तरीके से इसे criticize uh, किया सो इन दिस पिक्चर यू कैन सी ऑपोजिशन का एक मेजर यहां पे लीडर है हु इज ब्रेकिंग इज ओन स्मार्टफोन विद अ हैमर ठीक है एक हैमर से वो अपना जो स्मार्टफोन है वो तोड़ रहे हैं और तोड़ रहे हैं इसीलिए बिकॉज़ ही ही इज बेसिकली ट्राइंग टू एग्जिबिट हिज प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर लॉ क्योंकि द फोन्स द स्मार्टफोन्स और एनी पर्सनल डिवाइस जो इट इज मेंट फॉर प्राइवेसी और अगर मान लीजिए कि इफ यू आर नॉट इवन अलाउड टू यूज इट एज पर आवर विल द डेफिनेटली इट इज अगेंस्ट आवर राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच आवर एक्सप्रेशन और वी कैन से इट इज आल्सो अगेंस्ट द राइट to privacy so this is the reason why this particular person or the member of the parliament is basically or the from the opposition uh, party is trying to uh, exhibit his protest by breaking the his uh, own smartphone with the hammer so let's look at the concerns about the law the venice commission which is the advisory body of the council of europe on constitutional matters has raised concerns about the unclear interpretation of a few important terms like disinformation so as i told you yahan pe jo most important ground jo of criticism is this term disinformation okay so because the disinformation can be misinterpreted by the government as well the commission has also raised concerns about the assertion of what amounts to the disturbance of public peace because dekhi koi bhi particular act by any person can be termed as a disturbance uh, of the public peace hai ki nahi to ye kis tarike se ise interpret kiya jayega ya kis tarike se ise aap keh sakte hai ki government like up to what level it will be uh, considered as a public peace to ye specifically mention nahi kiya gaya also concerns have been flagged against the law for entrusting the prosecutors with the responsibility of determining the interpretation of the terms to yahan pe jo interpretation hai for example maan lijiye terms like this disinformation and then provisions like the public peace to ye kitna hat तक आप कह सकते हो कि एक पर्टिकुलर एक्ट या इवेंट वेदर इट इज अ मैटर ऑफ डिस इंफॉर्मेशन और नॉट सो दिस कैन बी इंटरप्रेटेड बाय डी आप कह सकते हो कि अब जो जो प्रोसिक्यूटर्स है तो उन्हीं को यहां पर रिस्पांसिबिलिटी दिया गया है ठीक है सो दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई दिस इज दिस हैज बीन क्रिटिसाइज्ड द क्रिटिक्स आल्सो ओपाइन दैट टर्की बीइंग अ हेवीली पोलराइज्ड कंट्री ठीक है उन्होंने कहा है कि टर्की जो या तुर्की इट इज अ हेवीली पोलराइज्ड कंट्री द कोर्ट्स हैव पास जजमेंट्स अगेंस्ट जर्नलिस्ट्स एंड अदर सोशल एक्टिविस्ट्स इन द पास्ट तो देखिए क्या हुआ है टर्की के केस में देर हैज बिन नंबर ऑफ केसेस व्हेन देर हैज बिन केसेस आप कह सकते हो कि व्हेन देर हैव बिन जजमेंट अगेंस्ट जर्नलिस्ट एंड अदर सोशल एक्टिविस्ट तो दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई यहां पे कहा गया है कि दिस इज नॉट बेनिफिशियल फॉर द राइट टू फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच या एक्सप्रेशन हो गया या मान लीजिए कि जो प्रेस फ्रीडम है तो उसके भी अगेंस्ट है 
The critics also argue that with the new set of legislation, content that challenges the government narratives and highlights the truth can be qualified as disinformation. Obvious sa baat hai, is tarikhe ka law jo agar India ke case mein bhi jab bhi is tarikhe ka law pass kiya jata hai by the union government, to isse criticize kiya jata hai because there are chances that the ruling party may use this particular law to, ab kya sakte ho, to curb the uh, speech of the people, to curb the freedom of people and also is tarikhe se kya ho jayega, jo people belong to the opposition ko, now those people who speak against the government can also be brought under the purview of this law and they can be punished as well. So this is the reason why in order to maintain the freedom of speech, this law has been criticized. You can say that the government may have a tendency of misusing this particular law uh, under the pretext of disinformation. So the journalist the new legislation would recognize new websites as part of the mainstream media. So you know that there are many such websites that have no channel or news that you can say that there is paper but they do their set of reporting. Now they would also be brought under the purview of the mainstream media and hence they will now be required to comply with the same regulation as those for the newspaper. So this particular act, this information law, it is not just limited to the journalists or the newspapers, it is also uh, can say applicable for the news websites as well. Regulations can mandate that news websites uh, take down reports when flagged by regulatory authority and post a refutation on the same link. So, here the regulations are that the authority hoga, whoever will be responsible for regulating the news. So, if they flag a particular report or an article as derogatory, then the website will be forced to put them down. So, according to uh, experts and critics, uh, th so Turkey or Turkey uh, already has an unimpressive record with respect to press freedom Take as it is ranked 149 out of 180 countries in the press freedom index 2022 so this year's record the uh, ranking the index that is the press freedom index where countries ko record kiya ja, pe countries ko aap sakte ho ki rank kiya ja hai according to the freedom of press in their own countries so in the ranking you will see that Turkey ka jo rank is very poor hai, 149 so in this case if it is passed then definitely it will, be, uh, it will be more detrimental to the, uh, uh, like to the cause of the journalism. Right? So, but in this case, if you see, the rank of Turkey is 149 out of 140, which I have told it is a poor rank. India's rank is also bad. India is ranked at 150 out of 180 countries. So, you should know about it. Alright? So, this is the law. Hai, but then again, the government of the Turkey, that is the Turkish president, uh, that is uh, Recep type uh, Erdogan, where you you should know that uh, Turkey may be elections be hone wala hai. so this is the reason why this particular law has been brought by the president that is Recep Time Erdogan so he has held that the need for such legislation had become imminent due to the increasing circulation of fake news or the false news jo rumors hote hai, which are evolving as national and global security threats okay so this is basically not beneficial for the sovereignty of Turkey this is the reason why this particular law had to be brought about so they basically sara jo criticism hai, unko discard kar diya hai. so in short agar aap ye dekho ge, which the government of Turkey has adopted a disinformation law that aims to curb the spread of disinformation online or via social media take it, or through the news uh, like today journalists however this new legislation hai, has attracted severe criticism from the opposition and journalists and has been regarded as a censorship law or a black law which is trying to curb the freedom of the people for the lack of clarity and increased powers being accorded to the government take it, and also because of the uh, aap sakte, because of the vague definition or the vague use of term like disinformation. So, this topic is basis for the police practice question. Please answer in the comment section. So, the next article is about uh, this state of Ranachal Pradesh. It is the 8 a.m. sports diet scholarship. Okay, so this scholarship this is basically an initiative of the leading NGO Helping Hands. You have definitely heard of this name, Helping Hands, with which a uh, very uh, a popular name is associated from the state, that is Robin Hebu. So, this particular Helping Hands, in collaboration with the Gurgaon based VR Industries Private Limited, has launched a unique sport, sports scholarship program for the young sports person of the northeastern region to support their nutritious diet. So, you can see this is about the sports diet ke liye scholarship. Diya 
This can be important from prelims, means you cannot expect a question from this section. However, it has been taken from the Arunachal Times. So as I was saying about this leading NGO that is uh, helping hence, it has collaborated with VRIPL that is VR Industries Private Limited uh, and launched a unique sports scholarship program for the youth uh, or the young sports person of the Northeast region to support their nutritious diet. So sports you should know that Northeast India ke case mein it is quite an important activity among the youth of the Northeast region, right? So even in the case of Arunachal Pradesh, recently you will see the national games in Gujarat mein, in 2022, so maybe Arunachal Pradesh has been able to clinch seven medals in it, they get six gold and one silver medal. So this is basically a major feat for this state. So इसी कारण, लेकिन यहाँ पे क्या हो जाता है कि कभी-कभी ये भी नोटिस होता है कि sometimes the youth or the sports person are deprived of the necessary diet. ठीक है, because sports person का जो diet है वो काफी अलग रहता है. So इसी कारण से ये यहाँ पे scholarship दिया जाता है, which is known as the eight M Sports Diet Scholarship. The eight M Sports Diet Scholarship 2022, first of its kind, was officially launched in Arunachal Pradesh by Education Minister Kam Arunachal Olympic. Association President Taba Tedir. So here also, uh, I've told you about him that he accompanied the team who had represented Arunachal in the national games. So in the function, he launched it. So from our state, 31 uh, have been 31 sports person have been selected and uh, if you look in the case case 50 players have been selected from the northeastern region and they would be given the sports dad scholarship through a stringent process following the Olympic guidelines uh, particularly those who have made their mark in state regional and national sports arena so obvious about that the people the sports person from the state who are representing are still in various levels and they would be given the scholarship okay so helping hands NGO president and state's first uh, IPS officer that is Robin Hebo so so, this uh, helping hands NGO hai, it is uh, the president is officer IPS officer Robin Hibu. Okay, the small 17 sta a member state team created a record of sorts in recently held. I told you about it. Yeah, where uh, Gujarat mein ye games for the national games where seven medals lie hai uh, apna, uh, states ke players. Yeah, where six are gold and uh, one is the silver medal. So the chief minister Pema Khan they provided cash incentive of three lakh and two lakh. So yeah, where six gold medalists hai unko three lakh diya jata. Per uh, each co per head, and also two lakh has been awarded to the one who has won the silver medal. According to Robin Hibu, cash if given could be misused. So, here completely cash ne diya gaya hai, pe monetary benefit diya gaya hai, for which it was decided to give the sports scholarship in the form of nutritious diet, okay, which will be benefit uh, beneficial for the sportsman or for the sports person of the state, and also uh, uh, pe a cash be diya gaya hai of rupees ten thousand one rupee each. It's a topic ke basis for the principal practice question. Please answer in the comment section. And basically, with the launch of this scholarship program, the concerns for nutritious food for players to play would be also be solved at this stage. The next article is about one of our closest neighbors, that is Pakistan, which have been removed from the FATF grey list. So FATF stands for Financial Action Task Force, the international watchdog here on terror financing and money laundering. So this force, task force, is responsible for preventing terror financing and money laundering. But the uh, Pakistan jo country it has been removed from the grey list. So this can be important from prelims and GS paper to India and its neighborhood point of view. It has been taken from the Indian Express. So current context, as I was saying, the Financial Action Task Force, the international watchdog on terror financing and money laundering. So across the world, any kind of activities related to the terror financing and money laundering, the responsibility of preventing such act is the uh, is the responsibility of the FATF. Take it. So in a list hai, jaha pe, uh, do categories hai, ho gaya, gray list or ho gaya, black list. So the Pakistan jo country it used to be in the gray list, but currently it has been removed from that list. Take it. Yeah, gray list hai, isko kaha jata hai, increased monitoring. That is, yeah, pe jo tax force hai, they would be constantly monitoring the activities of uh, Pakistan, okay, of the countries which are in the grey list. India's other neighborhood on the grey list, that is Myanmar. Myanmar was also on the grey list, but they have been uh, demoted, we can say, to the blacklist. So, blacklist be dal diya gaya hai because of the actions by the military leadership. So, you should know that in 2021, mein, last year, mein, there was a military coup hua tha in the in case of Myanmar. So, because of the military leadership, this has been taken, this has been moved to the blacklist. About the effort, if you see it is the global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog okay, it is going to it is uh, it has the task of preventing the activities of, of uh, terrorism of money laundering and terror financing it also aims to counter the financing or proliferation of weapons of mass destruction it was set up in 1988 out of a G7 meeting that is the group of seven countries meeting tha, of developed nations in Paris May. it is uh, secretary Joe, it is located at the OECD that is the organization for economic cooperation and development headquarters in Paris.
अभी के टाइम में जो मेंबर्स है इज अ थर्टी नाइन मेंबर बॉडी तो थर्टी सेवन यहाँ पे कंट्रीज है और टू यहाँ पे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है दर इज द यूरोपियन कमीशन एंड द गल्फ कोऑपरेशन काउंसिल ठीक है और इंडोनेशिया जो है इट इज करेंटली द ओनली ऑब्जर्वर कंट्री ऑफ एफएटीएफ बाकी सब यहाँ पे मेंबर्स है इट इज द ओनली ऑब्जर्वर इंडिया ऑल्सो यूज टू बी अम्बर ओनली ठीक है इंडिया ने जब ज्वाइन किया था इट वॉज ऑल्सो आई सॉरी इट वॉज अब्जर्वर ठीक है बट लेटर इट बिकेम अ फुल मेंबर इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड टेन सो करेंटली इंडिया इज अम्बर ऑफ दिस थर्टी नाइन मेंबर बॉडी ऑफ द एफ So let's look at the grey listing and the uh, black listing provisions of this particular FATF. So the FATF plenary, so this is the body or decision making body of the FATF. So ये हर साल में ये तीन बार मिलते हैं इन द मंथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी जून एंड अक्टूबर तो रिसेंटली ये मिले थे एफ तो जहां पर डिसीजन लिया है कि पाकिस्तान शुड बी रिमूव फ्रॉम द ग्रे लिस्ट ठीक है तो टेक स्टॉक ऑफ द म्यूचुअल इवेल्युएशन रिपोर्ट ऑफ द कंट्रीज इट रिव्यूज तो जितना भी कंट्रीज का रिव्यू करते हैं सो बेसिकली उनका जो रिप्यूट रिपोर्ट है उनको रिवाइज करते हैं इट टेक्स द स्टॉक ऑफ इट इफ अ कंट्री अपियर्स टू हैव मेजर डेफिसियंशियस इन इट्स एम एल सी एफ टी रिजाइम एम एल का मीनिंग है एंटी मनी लॉन्डरिंग एंड सी एफ टी दैट इज द combating the finance uh, financing of terrorism which is basically the most uh, the purpose of the uh, FATF so if a country appears to have major deficiencies in this area it is put uh, it is put on the list of the jurisdiction under increased monitoring so inko basically FATF kya karega unko increased monitoring karega they would be constantly mo uh, monitoring this country so ye it's a kind of warning agar ek country ko grey list mein dala jata hai it's a kind of uh, warning ki hum yahan pe aapko observe kar rahe hai ki you are basically trying to finance uh, Uh, the terror, the, the terrorist activities, and also you are basically engaged in activities like money laundering. So, ये जो हाइड यहाँ पे जो ये monitoring में जो भी कोई country को दारा जाता है, जो warning है, इसी को कहा जाता है तो put into the grey list. ठीक है, जहाँ पे Pakistan था. And if it falls into address, basically if it fails to address the FATF concern, अगर फिर भी मान लीजिए कि without अगर ये जो warning वगैरह इसको अगर नहीं follow किया जाता है, and if it is still engaged in the active in the activities of money laundering and also in the activities of the uh आप कह सकते हो ऑफ द फाइनेंसिंग ऑफ टेररिज्म इन दिस केस उसको इसको पुट किया जाएगा डिफरेंट लिस्ट में दैट इज द हाई रिस्क जुरिस्टिक्शन लिस्ट ठीक है इसी को कहा जाता है ब्लैक लिस्ट जहां पे म्यांमार को रिसेंटली पुट किया गया है सो ये जो ग्रे लिस्ट है द ग्रे लिस्ट इंक्लूड्स कंट्रीज दैट आर कंसिडर्ड सेफ हैवन फॉर सपोर्टिंग टेरर फंडिंग एंड मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग तो दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई पाकिस्तान इट वाज क्वाइट सुटेबल इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लिस्ट ठीक है सो इट सर्व्स एज अ वार्निंग तो ये जो ग्रे लिस्ट है बेसिकली सर्व्स एज अ वार्निंग दैट अ कंट्री मे एंटर द ब्लैक लिस्ट तो अगर मान लीजिए The country is not taking initiative. If it is not taking any measures to counter terrorism, then in that case, that country would be put into the blacklist. So, यहाँ पे पाकिस्तान को अब कह सकते हैं कि पाकिस्तान को एक तरीके का warning दिया गया था. But then again, Pakistan has quite efficiently uh, used uh, the authorities, the various authorities, to curb terrorism, to curb the financing towards terrorism, and also money laundering. And hence, they have been removed from the particular grey list. ठीक है अब ये जो ब्लैक लिस्ट इंक्लूज नॉन कोऑपरेटिव कंट्रीज और टेररिस्ट विच आर नोन एज एनसीसी दैट सपोर्ट टेरर फंडिंग एंड मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एक्टिविटीज तो यहां पे जो आप देखोगे जो ब्लैक लिस्ट है इसमें बस आपको तीन ही कंट्रीज मिलेगा आज के टाइम में दर इज ईरान नॉर्थ कोरिया एंड अभी म्यांमार हैज बिन ऑल्सो पुट अंडर दिस लिस्ट सो दिस आर द्री ब्लैक लिस्टेड कंट्रीज सो दी एनलिस्टेड कंट्रीज जो है दे आर सब्जेक्टेड टू इंक्रीज फाइनेंशियल स्ट्रक्चर दस मेकिंग इट डिफिकल्ट फॉर डेम टू प्रोकर लोन्स फ्रॉम द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन एफिलियट टू दी एफ तो अगर मान लीजिए कि कोई भी कंट्री अगर ये जो ब्लैक लिस्ट अगर इसके अंदर आ जाता है देन इट विल बी डिफिकल्ट फॉर दोज कंट्रीज टू सिक्योर लोन्स फ्रॉम दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक द इंटरनेशनल मॉनिटरी फंड दट इज आई एम एफ या फ्रॉम दी वर्ल्ड बैंक के केस में so this was a question that i had asked in the previous video let's look at the answers so the answer for the questions the first question was about the first bioenergy plant by by a private company now this has been established in punjab as i told you and which of the following bodies grants the blue flag certification to beaches so recently two beaches ko mila hai from lakshadweep and it has been done by the fee that is the federation for environmental education so for now that was all from our side for this session thank you so much for joining and we'll meet the next one bye bye and take care